This time around, picking up the Yone for Palafox and having the kill matchup into the Azir in mid lane, plus having contracts on the on the huge playmaker. Early thing. first dragon for energy. You were just talking about Ignar, you know, him trading flashes with Tomo pretty early on does also help out with a lot of that pressure. So, wow. all right, Cannon Minion at least will die. It's tanking a lot. That's one turret plate. How much can they deny from FBI here? I love it because it's a little bit of revenge. Santorin, best serve cold, he says, in first blood to Poom and Dignitas. Oh, this is... I, honestly, I don't even know how they get themselves back out of this. Even with contracts here, they got the kill. So Tomo denies even more experience to FBI. He gets another turret plate. Poom and Santorin oh are still God. playing bodyguard, and they're oh, going again! It feels so bad. He's just getting dope now. The cleanse, the flash, everything used. They get one trade back at least. The tower shots, it could just be enough. Contracts want to follow it up, but he is just a rel. And they get one, but it is the trade back forth. Yeah, they... Oh, he's got the speed up here. Ignar's coming in as well. Able to get the first one. There's the cleanse down from Tomo. Into the hands of Tomo. Oh, we'll spot out Contrast taking the blue. We'll take a brunt of damage here as the crash down comes through. FBI has also joined it. Pooh is like, why are there three people in my jungle? He goes down. Give up Rift Trail to keep FBI bottom. Contracts is poking around. He's not going to give up. Oh, no. And as soon as you use that crash down, you have no real way out. And Rich is just peppering in the damage. Tomo and Jensen trying to get over here to help their team. And Contracts is already gone. Got a nice little fade seal combo with Dokla there. And they're turning it around a little bit. Boom. That's a double kill for Palafox. Emperor's Divide comes back, though, and he pushes him right back. Oh, no. Dignitas. Right, and they rotate over yet again. But honestly, this... This team fight is hey, looking pretty the good. Hey, there's the crash down the fade seal. That's the wombo combo there, but delivery straight to Rich with the Emperor's Divide, and Palafox oh. gets burned down, as apparently the bird is feasting today as the double combo flaps okay. off. Ash Arrow up from the bottom, Quinn from the top, and Jensen takes the whole tower with the help of the Rift Herald. Mid lane prio secured. Guess what? They dealt with those two kills on the Yone pretty easily. Yeah, they did, apparently. And Jensen just gets a giant pack of gold delivered to his front door. And you love that because we were setting in the draft. He grabbed this to make sure he can be that sustainable late game carry for them. Well, he's already got a ton of gold here. He's about to go spend 1,700 of it. NRG need to make something happen. They get the nice little grand entrance there. Santorin gets taken down himself as Ignar gets the kill. One back for energy. They're still hunting contracts over the wall. Can he get the Q? He does. Oh, a little bit of knock-up follow-up there. FBI can't get into range. Just Blast that Yone, focusing him down. The knock back into the stun. Counter play from energy. Can they make it? Is this the big dotes play they've been looking for? Tomo is aggressed on by FBI. He got another TP in behind from Jensen, though. As Dignitas, they're trying to take the fight. Dokla has joined up, but is it the Wombo combo from your dreams? You got a nice pushback from Jensen, but it's NRG who find two for power. Ignar's story, Ignar's journey, at least at this point, so interesting, right? He made all of his fame on, on Misfits, came over to FlyQuest, didn't necessarily have the greatest foray in there, and now making something happen here. Uh, with the side of NRG. Yep, let's see if he can pull this game back because it's looking like Dignitas aren't going to stop. It's only 18 minutes they into the not. game and Rift Herald number two is going to allow them to expose this top inhibitor. They don't want to take it quite yet. Energy are going to take their early. compensation dragon. So this will be two for energy. I still like the call here from Dignitas because they open up topside already. Inhibitor will be exposed, and then they get the earlier rotation over towards mid lane to get yeah. tower number two. I can't believe, like, at this point, we're playing PvE base destruction. Dignity five on five now, mid though, as Dragon's about to spawn. Mid. Okay, there's still the knockback. The base oh. sealed was a beautiful call there, but the Antia Crystal Arrow comes back, and Palafox gets sniped down by Rich. That's not NRG not wanting to back off, though. It's shutdown goes to Big Dokes. He's still got to look oh. at the pickoff on a Jensen. FBI almost gets him, but this is a nice little front to back for NRG where they find a comeback. Okay, and they're not oh, done yet, Big Dokes. Oh, Dokla going a little bit far forward. Two ult over the Azir ult, but then Jensen had a better stopwatch. Broken stopwatch and inventory. That is the key. Hiding there. ability and the slow there. Keeps the rest of them off. Defends the rest of the teammates. Buys time. 
So Palapox can be a big saving grace for NRG here as he tries to get Poom. The Glacial Fisher does come down, but it will not save him. Ignar gets that start up the Baron, and we're going round two here. Got TP coming in now as well. We'll see them if they want to take the fight instead. It looks like they were just trying to bait it yet again. Trying to catch out Dogla. They get the Emperor's Divide. They're going to have to go in. NRG won it, though. Look at Palapox. He finds Tomo on the back in NRG. They're doing it. They get one on a Poom, too, and it's just team fight potential coming out from them. It's Jensen trying to get away, but he gets locked out again. And it's all she wrote for Dickel Steel. Energy, they find their angles here on the team fight. Teleport from Palafox. Round two. They're feeling rambunctious here. I, I know we had the, the birds on the side of Dig, but it's looking like the Red Bull Baron buff is giving them the wings as they get one on a Poom again. And they are just consistently taking the fight here to Dignitas. That was a triple kill for FP5 before he went down, but a Quadra in the end and NRG, they just got a gold lead for the first time in the game. Oh my goodness, Killer Instinct aptly named skill for FBI here. He goes under the tower to finish that Quadra. Tower down and with the Baron buff, energy completely erase the Dignitas gold lead. They take it for themselves. This was a game where Dignitas were up 4K at 13 minutes, Kobe. Like, this is actually such an incredible fight back for NRG, and it's the composition coming together. It's Palafox leading the way with a lot of these seals. CC chain there from NRG. FBI ulting into the back line. And oh, they're going to do it again. They got the engage there from Contracts as well. There's the seal fade. The combos ring true. My goodness, it's beautiful to see as NRG now with a 3K lead will take their third drag into the game. Oh, they're running it now summoners rift is should be able to finish up that uh inhibitor no problem for themselves back right out they've already and they're even going to get another turret for themselves here this gold lead had and we're at a point where dig's composition they had those early skirmishes they had a lot of cohesion and in even that. though they do have a hawk shot they know they cannot win this fight there's way too many angles in the jungle you can't afford to fight. Ends up missing the sealed fate, but uh, maybe the chase down from Santorin and Rich. They get the Gale Force forward. They're TPing now as well. Dokla coming to join the fight. He goes golden. That's that stopwatch you were highlighting earlier. And it means that Rich is just out of the fight now. Santorin's like, oh goodness, they gotta find a way out. Meanwhile, their team is being engaged on on the other side of the rift, as it's gonna be the TP coming in for Palafox. They gotta try to save the day as they got bursted under that barrier. And they have gone the distance in this first game as well. They are one away from that soul. We have Mountain coming up now, but it is pressure in topside on Rich. And he gets his GA pop, but Dignitas, they don't want to let that go unchecked. They want to try to take down Palafox here. That'd be a nice little shutdown as well. And they're going to give it straight to Jensen. Big Daddy Bucks. Wait, they're doing this at, oh. at such a terrible time. Energy, they're going to give up two <laughs> contracts down. The dragon is available. That could be an objective. This will be a third dragon. We're going to soul point for both mm. sides. Zignar just has to stand there and watch. Both sides, one big fell swoop of a team fight ends the game here. You see the flank contracts looking for that game end. They get the double grand entrance. FBI, he's getting focused down by Rich, though, and the rest of Dignitas. It is a very split fight as Poom's on the other side trying to save Tomo now. He's still oh, he alive. And Santorin gets locked down. Maybe he gets out the flank. Flash comes through what? as both junglers running parallel. Can't get back to their teams. Now we do see them reach up as Rich. Looking very aggressive, trying to spot them out here with all that mobility we were highlighting earlier. No way Tomo lives there. Zero HP almost left on that Ash. He barely gets out. Throwing out the W from Kaisa to hope for a lucky Yo, fight. yo, he dies this time. There's the shutdown and the blast cone to safety for Powell Fox. The Baron goes over and now the the Red Bull wings are covering over Dignitas. How does he get out of this oh. one, though? Palafox pretty big here. The Emperor's Divide blocks him out, and you got the GA, but it's not going to buy enough time here. You got four members of Dignitas, and it will be the kill going to Rich. <laughs> so. Going a little bit slow for Dig. Rich now on the next minion wave, and okay, Contract is they're in. Going to Killer Instinct from FBI in the back line here as well. The Fate Sealed isn't going to be enough. You got Dokla in there, too. And RG, they're doing it. That's already two there as well for FBI. They're cleaning out. Now, too. The only that's left is Santorin and Rich, and Santorin should get taken out by Palpa. I actually don't think he gets him here. I think Santorin makes it out alive, and he does indeed. So, so see, you, you can't be distracted by that. It's just the inhib that they're here for. They want to try to put it into this game. And while there still is the Baron buff there for 30 seconds, gives them a little bit of safety under these towers, they're still trying to dive underneath. 
Got the combo of Contract and Ignar, but now it's the focus on the Nexus turrets. Is this where they finish it? Is this where NRG make good on their second round Robin? They're taking them down one by one, and they're looking at the Nexus now. The final body falls, and Dignitas is no more. NRG will take that revenge, and they'll take game number one of the day. I think pretty good uh, bans on supports as well to kind of force that trade. And Vulcan is going to go the Alistar. So we move it another uh, jungle First realm. one in their favor. So while they don't get the kill, that's a very nice play out of the mid jungle. Yeah, I, I think specifically for Spika with, uh, with the failures of FlyQuest so far in the season, it is nice to see him being very proactive early on. Bottom nice side though. Coming out. Speaker gonna be looking no for the sums. engage. Unforgiven, no sums. He's sure to fall. Armeo can do nothing here. Ayla with a flash, but Spika gets him up anyway. Ayla will fall also. Two kills going to Prince here in the bot lane. I'll tell you, Rail Jungle. I think that's a bit of lack of respect there from Evil Geniuses. You've you got to expect they're still down there after the dragon. And Vulcan Flashing comes from in. Vulcan. He's looking for Jojo. Jojo's got to pull back. He has no rocket jump. He's gonna be talking down. By Vikla, Armeo arrives, but it's too late again as the flash forward. Off of, oh, it's not going to burn down in time. They're, they're coming off of it. Yeah, the equalizer is going to get dropped onto Jojo. Ayla hooks back to okay. the turret, will stay safe as FlyQuest <laughs> should secure this, but it may be trouble in the mid lane. No flash on Vulcan. He has the ulti, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Will just be a matter of time. Jojo gets the first kill. Vikla able to trade one back, though. Nicely done. But Ayla levels up, and they're going to look for the dive. Jojo trying to knock him down oh! with that explosive shot. Gets the reset. Ayla will fall. And now FlyQuest are on the hunt, and Jojo's on the run. Can he get the recall off? I doubt it. They're going to know where he could be. Jump. I see oh, Hexplash, Hexplash coming over. It's going to get close. Oh, he gets caught. Now, no way out for him. Vulcan's coming out, so... It'll just be a slow death as Prince is farming plates mid lane. FlyQuest get another one and are looking really good here against EG. I got a little worried. You know, they sub them back in. They want to play with confidence here. Armeo, though, looking for a fight. Not going to find the angle, unfortunately, for him. And now he's stunned up. Jojo, though, going forward. Ayla flashes in and Vikla is caught. And Vikla looking like he may fall down. But it's the Magnet Storm coming across Ooh. multiple members. And in flies Prince with the killer instinct. He's got it. The TP coming through as well from Impact. The Equalizer is here. And it's going to find Jojo. You can run. You can hide. But you're not getting out of that one. Jojo goes down as well. as the 12 minutes in here with the Herald with everything. And this is a play that EG started. Yeah, EG, they kind of missed the initial start of the Maokai. still ends up tagging Vikla, which based them into thinking they can go, but they kind of just run through Armeo and focus on peeling Vikla, keeping him alive and buying They got one gank down on bot, and now with the Rift Herald here, Vulcan's oh gonna look for the engage on Unforgiven, goes in, nicely popped on the ulti. The Feather Storm gonna come through, but Prince is here, and Unforgiven is gone. Ayla's sure to follow. They can reset up the dive and get another kill here. Vulcan gonna take aggro, and it's two easy kills for Prince. He is monstrously ahead. Impact pushing Jojo out in the picture in picture, but they're gonna take the tower. They get two kills, they lose nothing. Gentlemen, Evil Geniuses peaked at level one with that flash blow <laughs> on mid lane. Ever since then, it has been the road. Bot lane, Revenge in some trouble. We'll see if he can outplay. Tries to buffer the unstoppable. He's gonna have to go all out, but he's got no options here. Flashing back, does hit the Q3. Vulcan's still tanking it up, so survives. Well done to actually get out of it, but at the end of the day, the tower will still fall and he can't get anything back. They will get this turret, but I think they might have bought enough time that the equalizer's down for Jojo to get some play, though. That's a deep teleport flank from Revenge. They're reaching. Yeah, they're gonna look, but the counter TP is coming through. Jojo's gonna TP in as well. Everyone coming up towards this top lane. Vikla is the target as Revenge goes all out, but the equalizer is there. For Unforgiven in trouble as overheated impact is chasing him down. In comes Prince, flashing over the wall. It's gonna finish him off. Ayla sure to follow. That's two for Prince. There's the killer instinct. That's gonna be another. That's a third for Prince. Are we talking about playoffs <laughs> instead of the state of this 10,000 gold lead? What's there to say, what man? The comeback? How do they win? I think it's, uh, we, when we said the it's out of their hands, it means that, you know, opponents can still lose a uh -oh. bunch of games. Uh -oh. Vulcan flashing in. Uh, there, here comes the Magnus Storm oh, from Spika, connecting on multiple yeah. members, and Prince is cutting them down. Revenge gonna be going down in a hurry. He goes all out, tries to take him over the wall, <laughs> but it's gonna be the kill from Spika as Vikla piling in. Impact doesn't even need to be there. 11 now, the kill count for Prince, and FlyQuest gonna be cruising uh, in this game. Dragon number three picked up at their leisure.
Yeah. It's, no, it's not nothing. looking good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, was, I was trying to think of like a galaxy metaphor. Like You guys just left me hanging on that one. But Mark looking like he was on the edge of having something. Oh, yeah. Almost out of point. Prince maybe going to go down, but has the killer instinct. Jojo coming in, and Jojo oh. gets erased as Vikla drops the hammer. Armeo trying to find something, but there's nothing to find except the base, and they're going to be set packing. Gold, silver, and bronze will be awarded to all to FlyQuest members, it looks like, as the Baron goes down and you the base what? gets opened I up. think Spika deserves the gold medal for this one. Spika was too quickly. You didn't spend enough time winning. <laughs> So you want to stay in the game slightly longer, take the entire base of the enemy team. They're probably like doubling or tripling their time in a major advantage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just in this one Stat game. padding, here we Stat go. Stat the stats, let's go. BG will make one final stand, but don't think there's much going on for them as Spika stepping forward. Ayla's going to hook in. The Equalizer has dropped already, and Vulcan going forward. Jojo trying to knock him down. Spika may fall here, and uh -oh. he will. We'll see if they can turn it around. Ayla goes forward, but it's only to his doom as Prince and the rest of the squad will walk forward and claim two inhibitors. All right, with the Baron buff still on too, they've got a lot of time to work with. A minute, 40 seconds? Those Nexus turrets don't stand a chance. Yeah, the Nexus turrets are going down fast. EG trying to heal back up, see if there's a window here to make something happen. Jojo back to full health. The rest of the team now coming out from the fountain. They'll go for one final fight. Jojo, though, chunked low already, and revenge is just gone. In goes Vulcan, and Prince is in the back line, and it's all over but the crying. Prince goes into the stopwatch, flashes back, the ulti coming out, but Impact is oh. poking him up in the well. Uh -oh. But no, Unforgiving stepping back is going to get a couple. He's going to get a triple. He's going to get a quadra minions. from the fountain, and the minions will... is open, and EG going to try to mount their defense. We'll see if they can do it. FlyQuest going to be stepping forward here. Jojo Pian already going to be getting knocked down. He tries to buffer Prince back into the fountain, but he can't do it. And the rest of his team is already gone. Jojo will follow. Two kills going the way of Vikla. Make it three as the Nexus will fall. It's a triple for Vikla, and it's a huge win when they needed it most for FlyQuest. LeBlanc top actually has a lot of fun builds. You can even go like slightly tanky LeBlanc. Um, saw a couple of like Iceborne top side LeBlanc, so. Really curious to see here how they'll be able to get the objective out of it. And nice use of movement there, as well as the combination of the bot lane while Turtle and Chime. And I think, uh, if we take a look at Monster getting out of here, this wet noodle fight. I guess it's like Dang. a strong noodle That's... versus not a strong noodle. That's a solo and the fade away from the flash. First blood for Team Liquid. Yeah, Aaron LeBlanc. Yes, but it is still strength being put through the mid lane for APA Team Liquid. And Insanity, he's trying to get out. Does have the step back presence there, but it's still a flash from APA to make sure the fangs see. This and they're very happy to see that considering they had to give up that early dragon. And uh, they'll actually contest it with Scuttle. They get it, but Wild Turtle and Yawn, they're the big ones in this fight. Although Pyosik just gets focused down by TSM. That's a kill back. That's and the gold lead here, picking up the Rift Trail for some turret plate usage as well. Support, double recalls. Oh, there's the light switch we were talking about in the draft. Oh, nice little petrifying gaze, though. APA gets Boogie back, and it's a one-for-one -one trade. Maybe two in bot lane. Summit has found out Boogie, but will also be found out by Hanser, just leaping to put the pressure. Oh my goodness! The Moonlight Vigil got blocked as well by in front of him. Abilities of getting your all in and uh, does get a little bit out of him, but Pyoshik, nice time on the stun. <laughs> I just love that both of them kind of CC each other at the same time, but Boogie, he doesn't have any help here, and APA finds a helping hand. For APA, bottom lane is pushed in. So good groundwork done for TSM to get the dragon, but they pay the price oh, on top side. Onser will try to get out. He already burned the flash, though. I'm pretty sure he wasn't able to get over there. And that will with the static shift builds. But when you get a lead like this, you have to be able to continue pushing that, right? I, I do want to oh. see Summit continue being a side lane threat. Take yet another tower that's both in the top lane. And now Summit's unlocked. Certainly is. A very rich, uh, should be the richest in the game. Yep, richest person in the game. He's almost got, he's got double gold. Yep. He's got double gold over Hansa right now. All right, and it's a Night Harvester oh, follow-up. That combo, the second item spike with the Night Harvester is yeah. ridiculous. The Static Shiv proc, the Night Harvester proc. All right, Summit, let's see it. In the next fight, the only player with two fully completed items, and you're completely free now that you've taken both towers on top side for Team Liquid to try and set up a play there. He's roaming down to bottom first, but everybody from TSM, TSM has already vacated.
And that was when we were coming into it. Uh, I was talking to you a little bit about the difference in priority that TSM typically play around. Haunter's kind of on an island up here. I don't think it's any different on the Orn this time around. But the fact that Team Liquid were willing to try to attack that in this game. money plays and diving plays oh, and insanity. No. Insanity, run away! I don't think he's getting out of this one. There's the light switch by Boogie. Is it enough? They're coming in for the engage. Look at that. Bloody nature by TSM. It's still insanity going down. It's a nice trade back as Summit gets shut down, actually, going to Hanser. But you got Core JJ there. Re-engage on the other side. Piosik in low, but APA sinks his teeth in once again. No flash here for APA. There it is. We we'll curse see if them. Hanser can hit that bucket shot. He does. And it should be Boogie <laughs> picking him up. Shut down over. Yoshi gets stunned on the bottom side. Here come PP. the rest of the members. Teleport in. All right. Insanity coming down. But Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle just gets solo bullied by Summit. They should be able to respond, though. They cannot pressure him enough. And Insanity will get the kill. Meanwhile, a pick off on the Hanser. It does indeed. You hear the chance of the crowd feeding into Team Liquid's advantage here. And then Pioshik even with that stun onto Hanser into the wall, grabbing the extra kill through the river, plus being able to get the dragon. So many options here for TL because of the massive gold lead uh, and because of your... Oh, never mind. Goodness. There's that Miasma, but look, the light switch has come through. They're under tower right now, but the Moonlight Vigil from Jan might make a difference. <laughs> Boogie gets them back. And Pioshik, he's caught out here. The slowdown is there. They're going to take him out. Pioshik gets gunned down. Wild. back by the veterancy on TSM and it's actually maybe something that can play out in this game that veterancy could be key as they're trying to find a pick out here that keeper's verdict will make it an uneven fight and APA gets taken down under tower by insanity get a little bit of revenge there as re-engaged from Core JJ was a little bit wide but insanity has to flash out here comes Hanser see the knock up onto Jan he does connect it but then there will be no follow-up meanwhile at the base, Summit is on to your inhib tower and top side. Yeah, Summit's going to finish up with this inhibitor turret up here, but I still like the play from TSM. They're on the back foot. They make the aggressive play while sacrificing for a TSM. You don't want to have yep. to pay this tax, and it will end up being the Red Bull Baron buff for Team Liquid. All right, that's too high of a uh, price to pay. TSM going to try and get something else, but Team Liquid are coming to collapse. Oh, see a little bit of, oh, Hansu going Wait. straight to the wall. Not going to get the tower. Is it the minions this time? Hey. All in dive play. Uh, Boogie makes the call, Great. goes in Nocturne, and Kaisa follows up to get a little something for themselves. But looks like it is going to be two here at least for Team Liquid and still pushing <laughs> oh on the bottom goodness. side. That's the thing with this pick, though. This will be the bread and butter of the Summit LeBlanc, but it's all about the team fight afterwards and how you try to find an influence there. And the Lich Bane, I love the follow up here. He just melts these turrets uh, with the Lich Bane, level 16 LeBlanc. Now he's coming to harass and, and move through. The, they're just going to keep on powering through turrets. Here goes the dive. There, got the light switch and the Orn Horn. They get the double knock up there. That's actually pretty big. You got to look on the other side, though. Summit is coming over to try to join. And Yon has already found two. He's looking for more as the ADC for TL steps up to the plate and says, I'm here too, guys. <laughs> yeah, Yon. Oh, the oh, Insanity with the. For TSM. Oh, Mostly a Jan. denial here on the side of, of TL. Jan got hit with another one. Hey, we'll miss that next one. The Keeper's Verdict has gone through. Here is the call of the Forge God. Dragon goes over to Team Liquid. We'll see Hanser actually caught out here. There's the light switch. Boogie trying to find backline access. Just goes for the kills here. He's on it. He gets one on core as TSM. They're taking the fight in the pit. It's like shooting fish in the barrel here. Oh, petrified gaze for APA. Look at that damage. You want it in the pop up and he's popping up. He's trying to get that though. He's 1v4 now. Can he do it? He doesn't have any tools left. He wants more. He wants it. He needs it. He can get flush out. APA, is he going to make it happen? He doesn't have the damage here. He's kiting, but he kites into the abyss. No. They will have to make sure they're crossing their T's, dotting their I's, but that all starts with a big B at the Baron. Got TSM looking for an engaged summit, just trying to get as much poke in as he can. 4,000 health on the Baron. Ornhorn has been called. It will be TL backing off three-man knock up there, but nothing to follow up on as Insanity actually wants summit. Summit flashes early there. The Baron ends up going down to Team Liquid. Yeah, can they get out here? TSM trying to catch something through River. Looks like... Oh! oh! Yes. 
on the Casio, and they're going to oh, go for the pick. They're going for Summit. This has been a pick all day long, waiting in the wings, and they should be able to catch him out with the assistance of Wild Turtle. Although, he's buying a lot of time here. He will end up going back and just dying to chime in the end. It felt like on his previous team, oh. and uh, maybe getting a little bit of that back from APA here. It will be the Dragon burn down here it actually goes over to tsm as they secure the soul i can't believe they just got that re-engage from tsm and yon is completely caught out left in the dust you got a petrifying gaze that's pretty big apa blocking away let's see if the scaling has come online as summit's putting in some damage here and it's a catch out from team liquid they are gritty they are tenacious and they will the play secret goes a little bit wide that cooldown is going to be pretty long chime that is a big moment if summit goes on the other side though there it is orn horn Coming across, Chime looking for the big anger here and entrance. They do get one though, as they are trying to catch out Boogie. He's completely separated from the rest of the team. And Team Liquid, they're getting pushed off the fight now as they bought so much time. Insanity steps up and Insanity gets a double kill. He's looking for more. And that's a clean ace for TSM. They're still down in gold, but TSM oh! ace Team Liquid. Quadra kill for the man in the mid lane. You got a little bit insane in the membrane if you're going to step to insanity. Oh my goodness. Can they end the game while well, down in gold still? TSM, clean ace. Nobody drops. They're going to do it. This man is 12 and 2 on a Kaisa against APA, the man who has silenced all the doubters so far. And insanity goes, You cannot forget about me. This is gonna be a game finish from TSM, and they will guarantee a play in at least trying to get that tiebreaker in the future. They're up against Cloud9. It's to me really just seeing if Closure can get a lot of early ganks off and carry the game. Yeah, I was gonna say one thing that we've talked about is 100 Thieves early. Happen, but the baseline for Lee Sin is really low, so you're not always gonna make too much go on. Maybe a level two all in engage. Busio is forced to flash. The ignite is burning down on Sven, and he doesn't flash. He thought he was gonna live, but it's first blood over the hundred thieves bot lane. Closer the that Kenan would have could be vulnerable here as Busio might be going down. They know he doesn't have flash, and this time Sven saves the flash. The flash from Blabber follows up on Busio, and he's got nowhere to run as long as Berserker can get one more auto attack, and it's the final in the queue that gives the killing blow. Doublelift wants the fire right on back, but he steps too far forward, uses the cleanse, flashes backward, but it baits enough time. Maybe Closer King can look for it, flash queue, but Berserker flashes it, but Sven's got nowhere to run. Surely Doublelift cleans it up, and yes, they do! 100 Thieves fire right on back. Okay, this time I'll give you the least in support here. Uh, but quick coming down, pop the ulti. He's gonna look. Oh, okay. Spare rush into flash into charm. Doesn't quite go missing it, but hundred. One into the top side. You can see him looking for the sim bay. You know, already pre warded uh, over by that red buff. Takes down that herald, moves into the enemy jungle. Gonna be taking some of themselves and creating space by pushing back the C9 backline. But Cloud9 are not gonna have any of that, Azale, because they wait for Double to walk into lane and punish him without a summoner's spell. Zone. Bot. He could get picked off, similar to what happened down in bot lane. So paying the respect over to that, he's just gonna sit back at the tower, wait for the wave to crash. Your one item spike here, if you're playing any fights, it has to be numbers advantage. You need to make sure that you are always getting the jump on Cloud9. A win here for 100 Thieves. Yeah, and they are able to take down that tier one tower top as well as MS was pushing up there and Quid's now in trouble. The re-engage, they know that Quid doesn't have Spirit Rush here as he... Maybe the trail equalizer is gonna light them all up on the pieces. Double is forced to flash over the wall. Nice kick from Closer, keeps Berserker stunned up and they all end on that play. They're only able to trade one back. Someday firing with the teleport of his own as he re-engaged into Cloud Knight's back line and he's able to trade one back. Blabber stunned up, 100 Thieves come alive as they don't let Someday down and 100 Thieves pick up a massive win. Oh! But over the wall, MS from downtown! Man, it is hard to walk in here through all these Maokai saplings, and I don't know. Lucio looking for a Hex Flash, doesn't find anyone. Cloud9 all tightly positioned on the left side of this flank. They've given up River Control over to 100 Thieves, and now Closer is threatening. 4,000 HP on the Dragon, Cloud9 still waiting. Quid fires for Spirit Rush, but it's just the Equalizer right on top of the engage from Sven, and oh my goodness, this is gonna be disastrous for Cloud9, but 100 Thieves, they're just falling by the wayside. Cloud9 turned that fight completely around. It looked bad once Sven first went down, but as Nautilus, you know, your life is for the team. All four
four stay alive while they... here, guys. The hook was also buffered out by Sven. So yes, he flashes, he spear rushes, he survives. Sven goes down. But look at the position of these correct angles. And Hunter Thieves have not been able to do it just yet, but they're looking for MNS now. Okay, Closer looks for the kick on the MNS. Do they have the damage follow-up? MNS is starting up for pretty much pretty, oh, a lot of the time, but Clouds are trying to flash over the wall, but MNS still survives! And Dustblade allows him to escape alive, and Cloud9 is just cleaning up all the 100 Thieves members on the other side of the wall. Oh, it's disaster for 100 Thieves and Cloud9 for them. It's just another day in the office. Triple kill for Fudge. They're pushing in the minion wave. And with the Baron buff on their side, I don't they know. Landed the charm, but they weren't able to finish him off. And Quid went into his Zonia's pretty early there. It didn't when it matters most. For Cloud Nine, just a couple minutes away before they can push in this four carry from the side. 100 Thieves, an easy engage as MNS follows up with a double, and Cloud Nine are about to make this simple as they push into the base of 100 Thieves. That was crazy. Double was full health. I think that was just Void Seeker Shot Blast was 100% of his HP. That is ridiculous. You're two screens away and then you're dead. And now Cloud9 marching on the Nexus. Here comes the TP. They want to finish the game. Someday goes in for one slicing Maelstrom, but doesn't get all the full procs off. He pops before he gets anything done. Cloud9 take out. You actually get late game on Pure Sojourn Jace. You can get to a point where you can really? do two shock blasts per acceleration game. <laughs> So it is like really, really strong for Poke. We'll see if he has enough right, cooldown. Awesome. So let's see. Is he going to get a second one in this? Yep. There did. it is. So you can wow. actually hit that point where it's it's more of a late game build, but C9 going to end the game. I mean, they're winning it all right. I mean, do I even have to cast it? They throw out all their ultimates pretty much at this point. 100 Thieves are just crumbling. Retreating back to the fountain as Nexus turret one is about to fall. The second turret will fall as well. Dredge line doesn't even care if he hits it or not. Sven has done his job. He gave up his sacrifice. And you already talked about it before, it's just so hard to play Lee Sin at this point in the stage of the game when you're so far behind. But Cloud9, what a damn good way to bounce back after yesterday. And they're showing why they're one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, they're gonna try to pad the stats here, looking to farm some more kills in the fountain. Bella trying to make something happen. They are getting low. Okay, Boostio with the Magnus Storm. They take out two. Can they take out two more? But the minions are already doing the work. And Cloud9 will take another win in the summer split. On this, Jinx can also crush through turrets very I love quickly. This. So I that love combo this. is quite nice. Golden Guardian see three tanks all wanting to go forward. And who the he sees? From the, from the Nautilus can be really, really powerful. And I think now, Golden Guardians just have to respect the fact that Kenby is down here in this bottom area. River has spotted him. He's trying to play for that scuttle, and bot lanes are going to be moving up, so Immortals do have first move. And it should be theirs as a result. Ooh, Q flash from Treach lands it right onto both of the members of Golden Guardians, and they know that this play is already done, so no point in flashing away for Stixay. First blood goes over to And tech. they're both only one game back of where 100 Thieves is, right? You know, it is within reach, but they're going to look for a play on bot. River tries to pay the love back towards the bottom side of the map, but Kenvy's going to turn around with a counter gank of his own. Tactical has to walk out of this one. The flash from Stixay using it aggressively forward. Tactical, a couple more auto attacks, and there is the cleanup. The revenge has been made. Poppy gets a few levels under her belt can really start to win these trades it becomes pretty difficult as you're just getting harassed by the buckler if you try to leap forward you're getting stunned up but now it's a catch here on the bot side river's going down and it's just easy they knew that river had no flash and honestly the past couple of moves here that have so been was dealing with licorice in the river here Another play might be happening in the works here. Kenvy already hovering towards the bottom side of the map. They have vision cleared out, so Golden Guardians will not know that. Kenvy's making his approach. Flash right on target. And they know that 6A doesn't have flash from before. Oh goodness. It's a nine win curse. <laughs> It's still early game. We're not. We're not going to resort to anything quite yet. But they're initiating the dive, dive on the bottom side of the map. Six say oh, has the bailout, so they have to dodge out. Nicely oh. well played from Huhi. As Immortals forget about how Renata works, but now they have Balulu with the Mega Inferno bomb. They trade one kill back. Glory coming in with the sweep, and they just might spoon feed kills back into Stick Say. Shutdown gold goes over to the Ophelios. and Balulu is on the run. A river has made his way back from base after taking the Rift Herald. The trees cannot make the crash down over the other side of the wall. <laughs> Unfortunate as he throws out the dabbing penguin just for style points, but he knows he's dead. Yeah, he wasn't going to get out of there anyway, but that dive was just so mis-executed. Tactical at aggro, and that should never be the case there. From a power yeah. position, that is absolutely not what you wanted to have happen. Yeah, and I imagine that if the sun actually connects on to Huhi, maybe he doesn't have enough time to get the bailout out before 6-8 yeah. goes down. And now River throws out the in Nature's Wrath, and poor Soul has got nowhere else to run. Licorice picks up. In their direction. 
Streets maybe looking for something else, but oh, Gory just sidesteps it. It's a three Magnet Storm, but does Treats have any damage follow-up? I don't think so, because Baloo has already expended most of his cooldowns, and Treats is just gets left to die, as it has been to punish on Golden Guardians, you know. Black is stepping forward. Immortal is going to still try to go and look for something more. Gory is getting burned down low, but all the CC from River as Baloo is able to at least take out Gory before going down because the hostile takeover from over the wall. But Tactical actually takes out River. There's no damage fallout from Golden Guardians. Licorice just teleported in, but everyone from Immortals got out alive. Yeah, the Chumpers is there on the TP, so Licorice can't do anything as he does arrive. He just got CC'd up, who he tried to finish someone off. But Immortals just go right back towards mid lane, and this time there's no flash, there's no ulti on Gory. The Azir and the Aphelios are gonna be able to clean up the rest of it. Yeah. Another engage from Treats looking for Gory, but he just sweeps on over the wall and then pushes Balulu right into the arms of River. But Balulu with the W gets out alive. He's just making his way over to the safety of the jungle. And the rest of Immortals have to run away from Golden Guardians engaged. Nature's Wrath wraps up Kenvi, and he just has nowhere to run. River will get traded on back though under the tower. My goodness, this is a bloody game. Yeah, it's extremely bloody, and Bolulu is able to get out as well. His finish is the recall. Who he was hunting for him up on that top side is just going to TP back towards this tier two. Wants to be safe. Ah, Treats, though, he interrupted down. the shuffle. Oh, Gory. Oh, no. I'll actually stop you and harass you here, but gets flipped out of it with the remount there from Treats. Bolulu shows up, gets the kill, and now takes down really the... admiring. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The... <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I during that whole. Uh... That Licorice takes down the tier one top. Now goes bot and just gets a freebie on bot side. Like no one answering for this. That's not worth the counter strikes become such low cooldown that he becomes so tank now because a lot of their early game has been answered pretty surprisingly by Immortals and it's put them on the back foot. They're not behind. They're still technically ahead. He has already shown the LCS the truth about Ziggs. You know this. I don't think this champion has been, you know... Well, Lulu, he's going to be able to take a page out of his book and look for it. Yeah. And this is that play that we're talking about. You walk up, you get the charge, it's just gone immediately. That's for them. And if you're caught in the wrong choke point, or as you've been face-checking a Nautilus, it's looking bad. But Licorice is going to look for the engage on the bottom side of the map. Kenvi and Solo. Golden Guardians, you see they're not going to the Dragon. You can just pull off. You don't have to commit to this. Just let the Jax take the Tier 2 bot for free. Who he's gonna get locked up here. He throws out the hostile takeover. He goes down. It looks like they're actually just gonna go ahead and commit to the Baron, but it's gonna get so close. 2,500 HP. All the mortals are into the pit, and Kenvi steals the Baron away from Golden Guardians. Now Golden Guardians have to fight their way out. The tactical flashes over the Shurima shuffle. Stixay is able to answer on back, but now it's up to him to do the damage. He and Licorice have to clean this one up and make sure that Immortals don't walk away with any of the stolen Baron buffs. But Solo is so tanky. I don't imagine he gets out. The gravity gun might say otherwise if he can get in line for a root here, but Solo escapes and it's a heist for Immortals. Yeah, Immortals do start. Does get the ulti off, but they just say, all right, we're just committed to it. Who he's down. They use that Malkyle to try to peel and then Imagine if oh, so Golden Guardian's response be Stixay is already in the mid lane looking to get the push. Nice interrupt from Tactical, stops the reset from River, and so he's going to be delayed on his recall. Can Golden Guardians look for an engage before they do any more damage? Yeah, Licorice is trying to threaten the flank, so they clearly are wanting to go for it. Look at the Malkai coming up through the jungle. They're going to get behind him. They have two members behind. They're going to look for the Pinsir play. Reaper's Verdict was already used. Hostile Takeover does a hit. It doesn't reach Tactical. He's able to speed away. Licorice engages first. River right on top of the next. Magnet Storm to peel all the threats away from Tactical. Tactical and Balulu, he's chunked out, but he's not dead, and he can still fire back. Tactical finds one reset, and Golden Guardians have to retreat because they cannot play against an excited Jeep. No button. And that's going to make things more difficult, but it's getting back to this earlier scenario. Tactical is going to try to stay on it this time, though. He's going to finish off the Dragon, and now Golden Guardians do the commit to the Baron take again. Oh, and it's, solo whiff. it's only 9,000 HP. I mean, there's so much time, but now they're starting to burn it down super fast. Gory went over the wall, and River secures the Baron. Hostile takeover, buys some time for Golden Guardians, then they get a pick onto Kenvi. Will they look for the re-engage? Liquors is the first one into the front line, but Immortals have disengaged with the Chompers, and they walk away. Down mid with this, so the Tier 2 mid is going to be free. The Tier 2 top is going to be free, and they will have to eventually get those waves moving in the right direction through bot lane, but... Ooh. That Zig's ulti really hurting now as Bolulu is 16. So it is now a 53 second cooldown at this point and does an incredible. And all three lanes at the moment. Oh, I like that from Solo. He actually just knocks out the Jax to remove the Baron buff from the minions. And he's going to clear out that double cannon wave in River. River now. He's forced to flash. That's Nautilus ulti down. 
They're making their way through the mid turret. Oh, the Licorice goes in, and they're using the hostile takeover now on the Licorice. A nice stopwatch. That should buy some time for Golden Guardians to close this one out if they have the Baron minions on their side still. But it looks like it's just timed out. They will be able to get the middle him inhibitor now, but Golden Guardians shift their attention towards the bottom side of the map. It's Dixay flashing forward. Tactical almost goes down from the Gale Force. He burned both summoner spells to escape from Stixay. Yeah, he's barely able to survive there, but Golden Guardians just kind of brute forward it. Uh, Brute, brute force it, excuse me, as Licorice came through mid, is able to just run in on them, push them back, they step up, they kill off the tower, yes, he almost goes down, but he has the Sterix pop, he has the Zonius to buy time. The big and, thing we're looking here for yeah. this next fight, I mean, Dragon is coming up in 24 seconds for Immortals, they're just gonna turn right onto this member from Golden Guardians, who he was tagged up, he has the bail on, he throws out the hostile takeover, but if they don't get a kill, then he's just gone. Licorice is prevented from getting any closer to Baluba, but Gory is teleported right below and Baloo is forced to flash over the wall, but he shifts on over. He picks up the mid laner of Immortals. And now Golden Guardians, could this be the pushing end as they are forced to recall? But Immortals, Kenvi and Solo cannot find a place to retreat. Licorice is preventing his recall, so he gives Golden Guardians the guaranteed numbers advantage. Solo had the TP on back. Tactical is here as well, but can he wave? Oh, six has a lot of damage. Stopwatch is forced to pop. They have to defend him, but he goes down anyway. Tactical is doing everything he can to defend against Golden Guardians. They want to pick up this win for Immortals, but Golden Guardians have a conspiracy to beat. They have to beat the allegations. They have to win. Ten wins in a row in the summer split. Gory looks for the shifting sands. Damn your conspiracy video, Jack. Golden Guardians will take their tenth win for the first time in the LCS. For the first time in franchise history here, Golden Guardians reach ten wins. They will.